Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Open XCOM Terror from the Deep, the World of Terrifying Silence mod version 2.18. We have the newest uh, Open XCOM Extended version 5.1 installed as well. And besides the main mod made by Nord, we have two small mods made by me. Um, the one which you know from Area six, uh, 51 to hire clones of our fallen operatives and um, also some small visual effects which were not included in the main mod. The options were mostly set, the important ones at least, by the modder. I've uh, taken liberty to turn on and off some other things I liked or disliked. So that should be fine and we can uh, go ahead and start a new game already. We will be playing on the veteran, not because uh, I feel superhuman would be too hard for me, but because I feel that superhuman might be too easy for me, no matter how strange that sounds. Superhuman usually has a lot of aliens in the missions and gives us a lot of loot, and that loot makes the economy um, part of the game very easy. So I'll try on veteran, having less uh, loot, and the aliens will be almost as hard as on superhuman anyway so uh, if we see that it's uh, too easy we can still switch to superhuman but i somehow feel that it will be even harder on veteran anyway let's uh, begin and we'll uh, we'll uh, start i don't know we'll start over here We'll name our base Ocean Base 1, the reason will be clear in a moment. And we'll go straight for the UFOpedia, because there's a lot uh, of lore, initial lore, which we need to know about. So let's go and um, read all this stuff. It will take about 10 minutes, but uh, no worries. The Mary Celeste sinkings. In the past few years, shipping and civilian travel organizations all over the world became concerned as surface vessels and aircraft began disappearing with alarming frequency while crossing the world's oceans. Reports of strange submersible vehicles spotted at the sites of some of the disappearances were dismissed by world governments, but not by the general public. Responding to tabloid accounts of another possible alien invasion, the public cried out for the governments of the world to reactivate the heroic XCOM organization as a precautionary measure. Starting from the end of the previous alien war, an organization called Sub-Oceaning Reconnaissance and Extraterrestrial Salvage Operations, Soriso, owned by F. Denman Williams, has been employing um, has been employed cataloging underwater UFO crash sites to then search for sealed allium containers among the wreckage. To appease the public, the world governments have taken control of key Soriso assets and have officially established Ocean Base 1 as XCOM's first operational command center. And that's why our first base needs to be called like that. Ocean Base 1 is our new headquarters. Confronting aquatic threats is a new effort for XCOM, so our tactics and weaponry must be developed practically from scratch. Though we possess some aquatic equipment, more complex tools must be researched, designed and developed specifically for these needs. Resources from the previous war will be of little help to us because all Illyrium reserves have long since been exhausted and almost all alien technology based on Illyrium requires it to function. Even our newest and best alloys use Illyrium as a reactant for fabrication. So. That's what we know from the start. We also have some concepts of uh, water pressure and fighting below water. There's about six or seven of them. We'll shortly go through all of them. I will skip to the water pressure concept and high stun concept because they have little flaws and will be replaced in the next version with better descriptions. Uh, but basically water pressure concept says that if there are cracks in our armor somewhere and it's not functioning properly, we'll be... Um, suffering from stun uh, every turn or something like that. The underwater fire concept is also new, uh, not new to us, but uh, at least we can read about it. 
It is hard to set fire to something in the sea, so we employ special chemical compounds based on phosphor, or phosphorus, uh, which is capable of burning in water. Incendiary rounds do very little direct damage, between 0 and 10 points per hit. I think that's wrong, it probably should be between 5 and 10 points per hit. But continue to deal damage every turn that the unit is standing in fire or on fire. This damage ignores armor ratings, but not armor resistances. We must keep this in mind for who knows what we will face. Sniping concept. To shoot targets which you cannot see, you need high expertise in aiming. If a unit cannot see his or her target, his or her aim receives a 50% penalty. Some weapons can reduce this penalty, but they are difficult to acquire. So we know this from pirates and other mods. Uh, barrage concept is uh, relatively new. Weapons with uh, more than three shots in auto shot mode can be fired as a barrage. Use Ctrl, Shift and click to set the first target, then normal clicks to set the second and any further targets. And the auto shot will then be spread between these two points. Hopefully I can show this to you soon. High stun concept I will skip. Um, it's probably supposed to, you know, do uh, damage to your HP, do, do lethal damage uh, when you are lying unconscious on the ground and are in shock, basically having uh, uh, two high stun levels. But I don't think it works now, so we'll skip it. Sonar concept. To improve visibility underwater, we can employ sonar instead of trying to use surface night vision. This allows us to see further and to see through smoke, but color visibility will suffer. If an armor is equipped with sonar, then its range will be described in the USOPD article. I don't think the color visibility suffers, it's just uh, fluff, but basically it's, uh, it's uh, the good old night vision and thermal vision which we know from other mods. Disrupt mission concept, however, is uh, brand new and uh, it is a geoscape concept. We can disrupt alien missions now. If we are persistent at sinking USOs, the aliens may decide to abandon their current mission. Beware, the aliens prioritize some missions over others and they will try to complete uh, their highest priority missions no matter the cost. In many cases, the chances of making them stand down are not high. All right. We do have some... Um, Craft and equipment, I hope. No alien technology, but we do have Seamaster, designed by the US Navy during the Cold War. The Martin uh, P6M Seamaster is the fastest flying boat in the world. XCOM Aquanauts can be deployed using the DPVs, which I'm not sure what that is, from any spot on the sea surface or from the air using drop cords. I guess DPVs will be something uh, you know, like paratroopers, basically, uh, that you can deploy from the air and drop down. I need to Google what DPVs mean, or maybe it will be written here somewhere. It can also attack targets in shallow water. It's very slow and uh, has only cargo space of eight. It can carry deep bombs, which are classic bombs with adjustable detonation depth, can be used only at close range, which is like 8 kilometers, which is nothing in XCOM world, but it does decent damage. Only 5 though. Yeah, only 5. We don't have any submersible weapon systems, but we do have some general equipment. We have diving suits, a common semi-hard diving suit made from polymer fibers and modern alloys. Provides weak protection against uh, weapon fire, but allows diving to any depth. This is standard XCOM equipment for Aquanauts. Has some armor, but is vulnerable to melee and acid. Aqualung is a standard issue light diving suit with an Aqualung. While it provides no additional protection, it allows relatively free movement underwater at the expense of greater expenditure of effort. <laughs> at the expense of greater expenditure, okay. Uh, no armor um, is not uh, vulnerable to melee anymore, or acid for that matter. Uh, it even protects against melee attacks. I wonder why would that be? And decreases our stamina by 20 for some reason. Not sure why. 
A harpoon, standard harpoon thrower useful for hunting big fish. If we want to win the war, we will need something better. This weapon can throw common harpoons, explosive harpoons and syringe tipped tranquilizer harpoons. It does decent damage, but uh, as far as I know, it has basically just a clip size of one. So uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. We'll hire a few, but uh, or buy a few, but um, yeah, hopefully not for long. Dark grenade we know and love, a knife, a really nice green knife, has a melee damage of 25, and it's a conventional diver's knife useful for cutting seaweed or an enemy's neck, or the enemy's neck, no, or just enemy's neck. Anyway. Chemical flares we know and love even more than the die grenades. This compact device produces a bright flare of light at any depth or on dry land. This illuminates enemy units in the vicinity of the flare during deep sea or night missions. I don't think we need it during the deep sea missions, because we should have the same visibility as always, but we will need it during night missions definitely. And then we have a couple of base facilities, looks like it. No artifacts, no creatures, no submarines, yeah, only XCOM facilities remain. So living quarters, 50 personnel, looks the same as vanilla. Lab has 25 scientists that can work in a single laboratory block. Okay. Labs are equipped with all the latest technologies for research into materials, biochemistry and weaponry. XCOM has access to all the best research labs throughout the world, both civilian and military. However, only 25 scientists looks like it, yeah. Yeah, so this has been nerfed. A workshop for 50 technicians, so this looks the same as in vanilla. Standard sonar, 450 kilometers, which is totally not true. It's more than 3,000 kilometers range and 10% chance every 30 minutes, that's all right. Torpedo defenses, not sure if we'll need those. General stores for how much? For 50 storage space, so that's vanilla as well. 10 days, 150,000 is vanilla. Sub pens look the same as vanilla for, to me. A large living quarters meant for large bases. This facility is more space efficient than the standard living quarters, housing 225 personnel in considerable comfort as well as providing 25 storage space. Uh, if you ask me, four of normal ones give me 200 people. This gives me only 25 more, which is one eighth, right? Now 200, yeah. 1 8 for something like that. 12% for increase of a lot more than 12% in the cost. Uh, I don't think I will ever use that. Large storage facility. This facility is considerably more costly than the general stores, but it provides better structured storage space. Capacity 275 units. So this gives me uh, more. This gives me like 30% increase which we might use. This is not such a bad deal. Costs a lot more construction time. So 150 times 6 is about 600,000. 400, so... It's also not cost effective, but well, I guess we'll, we'll... We may be using this one. Definitely not. If it was at least 250 personnel, I would maybe say yes, but uh, it does... Compared to just four normal living quarters, it doesn't give us even one extra. It's like half an extra living quarters. That's that's not good. Corridors, simple passageways with side compartments come in two varieties, north to south and east to west. Cheap and we may need them in base defense, maybe um, as uh, ambush points or something training pools. Ten aquanauts can train for underwater interaction, movement and fighting here, which is very important. We'll need at least two of those. Okay, 
Then we have an outpost, a small habitation module. Precontinent 4 provides a self-sustaining environment, including living space for 5 aquanauts and 25 storage space. Which is horrible, because it takes 14 days, which is more than a storage space uh, provider, and uh, it houses only 5 aquanauts, which is basically nothing. You can't defend a base with just 5 aquanauts. And if I see correctly, it doesn't even have a radar, so it's totally useless. Just build living quarters and uh, general stores instead. There's no advantage to building an outpost. Okay, and that's it. So, um, yeah, great, I guess. Let's go into the base. And we have 4.5 million. So we'll need to... We'll need to build some facilities. I think we'll need a sub pen. We'll need definitely one more lab. We'll need some living quarters. Oops, not there. Living quarters. Living quarters. We'll need general stores. One and two. We'll need the training pools. Let's say two of them. And we still have money. Let's do a workshop or not. I don't know, maybe we can wait with the workshop a little bit. Yeah, let's wait with the workshop. So we have living quarters, we have labs, one building, we have workshop, and second is being built. Torpedo defenses, maybe we need torpedo defenses, I don't know if you need it in this game or not. Outposts, sub pen corridors, yeah, we don't need anything else there. Alright, then research. Only 25, but we start with 15. We can put them on uh, special weapons acquisition, which would give us access to some new items. That's nice and leads to other stuff. Okay, or Soriso database, which gives us access to medikits, wide array sonars, also good. Or inert illyrium, which allows us to recycle some sonic weapons. Interesting. I think we need uh, better weapons, because we currently have uh, basically nothing. Yeah. As you can see, we have exactly... Well, harpoons and knives. <laughs> That's not gonna do. Uh, we might need to... employ 10 more scientists and maybe 12 more aquanauts. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, and let's purchase some more stuff. So we have eight harpoons. I think we won't be needing too many of them. So eight is fine. Maybe 2,000, I mean. Yeah, 36, that's four times. Yeah, that's okay. Let's take a couple more explosive ones. Like 10 and maybe some tranquilizer ones as well. Die grenades, sure, we'll need about 20. That's fine, we'll need probably a few knives. Let's take four more and we'll need tons of chemical flares. Let's say 30 or so, 21, 32, yeah, something like that. So that, that, let's take 10, 24. 12, 12, 16, I don't know. I don't know how long we will be using these ones. Hopefully not too long. <laughs> so um, that's all right. Let's purchase. It costs not much. All right. What else? So we have 20 aquanauts, 5 technicians, uh, 25 scientists. That's all right. Living quarters are full. Storage space is still fine. Labs will be full soon. Monthly costs cost a lot. One million. I'm wondering about building that workshop, but we do have one and it has space for 50 guys. So I think I'll rather, I'll rather keep the money. And we might need to build uh, one more sub-pen eventually. 
I don't know if it's sh if I should build it now or or not. Sub pen costs two hundred thousand. Hmm. Well, I guess not just yet. Not just yet. Although having one more would really not hurt. I have no idea how this mod will progress in the first year. If you look at the clock, it's two years before the invasion actually. So we might start uh, relatively modestly, <laughs> but we'll see. In the meantime, let's uh, rename all our fish food operatives. So Lyubov Smirnova is actually uh, Yataka Shimaoka. Welcome back. You are relatively brave, very good reactions, not so accurate. Strength is average, I guess. You'll get better. <laughs> then uh, number two, we have a guy with not such a great firing accuracy, very decent reactions and good throwing, good strength for throwing as well. So maybe a throwing expert. Uh, Master Blaster. Welcome. Okay. Let's give you sort of this icon for throwing. Number three, very bad firing accuracy as well, but decent strength and decent throwing again. So John the Aquanaut, if I can spell it correctly will be Aquanaut, will be a throwing expert as well. That's Hartenstein, by the way. Welcome to the team. A snake, a snake. <laughs> Interesting name. Is, again, no firing accuracy, good strength, good throwing. Wow. A third throwing expert. How can this be? Well, I guess we'll be doing a lot of throwing these days. Ivan Akovich, welcome back to the team. Firing 50, well, that's better than all the rest, but not, not great. At least you're brave. No reactions either. Starving Poet, welcome. Here we have something decent, no bravery and no strength, but uh, firing 70 is the best there can be and uh, decent reactions as well. Iris Mono, welcome back. Okay, this guy's reactions and bravery is uh, impressive, but firing accuracy could be better. You're now known as EXO. Welcome back to the team. And last but not least, we have the highest reactions possible, but not much else. We did not get lucky with the firing accuracy, guys. We'll have a salty seaman. Welcome to the team. Let's have a look how bad it is. 70 and the, the second best is 50. So you know, you can get between 40 and 70. And we basically get between 40 and 50 with one exception. <laughs> Thank you, game. That's uh, so nice of you. In true fish food spirit. Okay, doesn't matter. We'll have 12 more guys. <laughs> and uh, I won't equip you just yet. I will wait for... Uh, stuff to arrive. Let's have a look at the armor. We have diving suits and aqua lungs and we have unlimited amount of them. I'll give everybody a diving suit because that other thingy decreases our stamina and our stamina is probably very bad already. Yeah, minus 20 would be 20 stamina, which is like crazy bad. However, Iris Mono with 67 stamina could get it. 
because that's 47 that's what other people have basically I don't know is it um, but it has even less armor I don't know why would you use the aqualung what is the purpose of it I somehow fail to see it right now anyway take all that stuff and um, that one million is bugging me <laughs> I want to invest it but I think there will be better time to invest it actually all right let's save it here I should have saved it before because it's not really the beginning anymore it's 25 minutes into the episode and let's check the graphs So that we know what's going on. Funding. All right. We have just one Seamaster, which we haven't renamed yet. It's the Seamaster. No, not Seamaster number one. And um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Let's uh, fast forward time. We have suspicious underwater activity, which is... Uh, somewhere in Antarctica all right so yeah I guess we can try and go there we have just this nothing else all right so one two three one to, yeah, something like that. All right, Yataka will have one more. And now melee 20, 37 is good. You can take a knife. 24, 39 is good, Ivan. 22, 23, 29 is not too shabby. 25 on salty. Okay, you can get it as well. Actually, we have more uh, thingies. So let's put it on people who can shoot. So Yataka 47, no. Actually, where is my sharpshooter? Starving Poet could get one more. And Iris Mono, you need tons, right? Something like that. Okay. Well, some other people can still carry more so that they can throw it to maybe others. I don't know. The Ataka, they are easy to carry anyway. Nobody is overweight or anything. All right, put it there. And there. All right, and Iris Mono and 50 Accuracy Guy. Starving Poet can take one in the other hand as well. Okay. That's it. And let me have a look. First mission. So let's um, take the Seamaster and hopefully go there during the day. All right, Seamaster ready to touch down near alien presence. Begin the mission. I don't know, probably. Yes. Strange sightings indicate an alien presence flying sub Seamaster. People aboard passing ships have reported strange creatures emerging from the depths. Investigate the area and search for answers. Extreme caution is advised. This mission will be completed when all enemy units have been eliminated or neutralized. 
Recovery of any artifacts, technology and corpses can then be initiated. To abort the mission, return XCOM Aquanauts to the flying sub or place them on the drop court DPV rendezvous points and click on the abort mission icon. I still don't exactly understand what DPV is. Is it the drop something something? Not sure. Also, I think we should start uh, with uh, these things in our hands. Mm, starring poet, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you should start with that as well. Okay, that's everybody. And look at us, so we don't start in the sub, we start in, well, this thing. And the map is uh, pretty big. <laughs> it has four levels altogether. All right, let's take uh, EXO, turn around, and we already spot something. It's a, uh, it's a creeper. Wow, a creeper. I don't know what creepers are, but they sure are creepy. There are four creepers. One. Oh, there's a creeper right here. Oh. Well, they don't seem to be shooting, I think. I wonder if they can come closer to us. That's really hard to say. We definitely need to kill this one. I don't have any explosives. And this doesn't seem like... It's not a... It is a day mission, so we don't need the flares, right? Yeah, we totally don't need the flares. Okay, I will hope that these guys can't kill us straight away and will concentrate on the other guys. Anybody with... Uh, I mean, how, lo how much does it take to shoot? 32%! Okay, we are so dead. We are so dead. 19... It will take a lot to reload. Hmm... So if you drop, you already have 30, 40. Yep, that will not be good. I can tell you that right now. Okay, so maybe somebody with a good... with a good melee accuracy, 25. We had somebody like 39, yeah. Ivan Akovic and Master Blaster. Master Blaster is there, that's far, and Ivan Akovic is here. You could get there and you will have 17, and I need to still. Hmm, I need to still get a knife in your hand, so you probably won't be able to do anything. Yeah, if we don't kill this guy, we are fish food, literally. So, starving poet. Maybe we can uh, produce some smoke. We shall produce smoke with Yataka. Prime. Throw it somewhere there. Maybe they, they will not see most of us like that. Hard to say. Okay, 
a starring poet. Your time to shine. Hey! Look at you. Go back. <laughs> that was not bad. That was not bad, my man. Okay, John. 35. Yeah, that was somehow expected. Okay, done, done, done. You can... Cannot do anything. And the second team... Do I want to shoot with you? I'm not sure. Master Blaster and Ivan Akovic will take the knives and they will turn that way. If somebody comes from this way, Iris Mono can probably shoot. She's she's good. You will turn around. Okay. So um, in a spirit of friendly fire, I should probably move her a little bit at least. 41. Yeah, and we'll try this guy. Oh, that's so sweet. All right. So you guys react. These guys might not see us. You know what? Salty seaman. Oh, you don't have a... You don't have a grenade. Fine, you guys stay there. You guys stay here. And let's see what these guys can do to us. Nothing. Okay, and I need to replace this horrible animation with something different. But we'll have... Um, a starving poet already killed someone. So he can go and scout for me. Seriously, poet? All right, well, salty seamen. Okay. Most interesting. So, John the Aquanaut, reload. Come closer, Iris Mono. Reload. Come closer. Yataka has reloaded already. Come closer. Okay. Exo will have the... Um, yeah, that kind of things. And the two of you... Master Blaster will go this way. Doesn't see anything. So I think we'll move uh, Ivan as well. I really, really wonder where they are. Somebody shot at this guy. I think it was the guy with uh, with the, yeah, EXO with the explosive ammunition. Good job there, EXO. Wow! Snapshot, which was like 30% and you killed it. OMG. There's one more. Rather far, but we can shoot there, I think. And they can fly or float. So, poet, that's not a good shot. You 
can see somebody right there all right on the second floor wow if you duck yataka you get a little bit better chance uh, only a little bit john the aquanaut okay we need to come closer iris mono 59 Ah, it's because you don't see them, you have this penalty, right. It's because of the penalty. Stupid, uh, stupid smoke. So, 41. It's not gonna make it much better, is it? Ah, oh, no, you see him now. You see him now. Oh, and you missed as well. Well, we need to go away from here, that's for sure. Like that. We also need to return with this guy. I don't know how how well they can do their stuff. 42. No, you can't see him. Alright, starving poet. Come on, guys. This is not funny anymore. Thirty six, already too much. <sighs> Maybe we will leave some with um, reaction fire. Still many people with no experience. All right. Hmm. Okay, John, you'll go here. That's fine. Yataka will stand up. Iris is fine. Ivan. I hope they can't get you, Ivan. From here, maybe. Oh, now you can see him. But trying to shoot is, is totally useless. Just duck. And I think we'll, uh, we'll end the turn here. I don't know who reacted, but you did it so well, people. It was Ivan Akovic? Must have been Ivan Akovic. Who else? Okay, anybody else needs to reload? The Ataka? Maybe Ataka? No. And Ivan, yeah, it must have been Ivan. Alright, starring poet. You can see somebody. But you can see somebody as well. Master Blaster, here we go. 36, if you duck. 41 and they are down. There's still more. At least they are going down without problems. That's that's very important. That is very important. Okay, salty. How shall we do this? John? That's all right. Creeper corpse. They don't leave any weapons behind. That's all right. I'm not going to go too much further. Maybe somewhere over here. Oh, and we already spot one. Which is good, I think. We want to know that there is something over there. Okay, X, so you don't see him, so you will have a penalty. These things are so hard to... Oh, nice. 
so hard to navigate. And there's still more. Iris. Ivan. And Yataka. Next turn. Alright. Alright, so somebody with nothing. Exo. Good spotting skills. It's another creeper. It's another creeper. Now we see him as well. Can't shoot very well. But okay, let's take uh, explosive rounds. Whoa, this is tense. This is tense. Exo. We'll need to reload as well. Twenty-nine, what do you think? Zero, okay. Hmm. Like that. And like that. That should be enough from this side. And... The attack over here. Exo go back. And Ivan over here. The Ataka sees him, but it's alright. Put that away. John. Sees nobody. Excellent, excellent. People are somehow shooting better at reaction shots than normally. <laughs> Don't know why. What kind of... I don't know what you reloaded. Normal weapon, okay. How about... Yataka, also normal. Iris will have an explosive one. And we'll start with uh, John. He's the only one who doesn't have experience yet. Okay, so let's start with somebody else. Starving Poet. Good enough. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Alright, then... Maybe a little bit up. Still can't see anyone. Alrighty. That's fine. John, come with us. Wow, I can't believe you did it, people. With the... Uh, so many reaction shots hitting, it's unbelievable what happened. 8 killed, 8 corpses recovered, very nice. Improvements all around except for John the Aquanaut. Accuracy, reactions, HP, stamina, time units and strength. No loot to speak of. Okay, well that's fine. We are short on solid harpoons and explosive harpoons and die grenades. But we have some ensigns over here. Yataka, Starring Poet, Iris Mono and Exo have been promoted. Congratulations, people. Congratulations. Let's return back to base. And I think we can call it an episode right now. Yeah, it's uh, 2nd of January. We have these creeper corpses, which is 80,000. We can probably research them. Yes, we can. They will lead to alien containment. Oh, we definitely need to do that. Alright. And we still have some transfers. 
Yes, only four hours for some stuff, so let's wait those four hours. Right. Explosive harpoons and so on and so forth, so let me put that on the craft before I forget. And um, yeah, there we go. Nobody got even hurt. Are we good or what? <laughs> Are we good or what? Anyway, that's been more than enough for today. I thank you very much for watching. When we come back, we'll name 12 more Aquanauts or fish food operatives and uh, hopefully kill some more creepers and other aquatic life. Till then, bye bye.